to talk to you about section 1.1 today. It's on patterns and in inductive reasoning. And the first thing we have to understand is the vocabulary that's going to be used in today's lesson. And so what we have for vocabulary is our very first our word called inductive reasoning. Now inductive reasoning is coming to a conclusion and a conclusion means coming to an answer, finding an answer based on a pattern of events that you observe. So the word observe means to see and a conclusion is like an answer. So inductive reasoning is coming to a conclusion or coming to an answer based on a pattern of events that you observe or that you see. Now, once you've discovered the, the answer to your pattern, you can see a pattern, then you can use the pattern to continue to describe the problem. And that is called using a conjecture. And so when you have a conjecture, you're using your pattern to describe the conclusion found using the inductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is the pattern and the conjecture is your conclusion. So the conjecture is a fancy word to describe the conclusion. I'm going to give you an example of this in two different ways. One way using um, numbers and one way using pictures. So two examples only, number patterns and picture patterns, and then, you're going to, then you will be able to practice it doing your own homework. So go ahead and make sure you have these two words written down in your notes. And when you're done, then go ahead to the next example. Okay, the first example we're going to talk about is number patterns. And for our number patterns, we're going to first have to use inductive reasoning, meaning we have to discover the pattern. And so what I notice with my patterns is first of all, my numbers 192 and 96 and 48 are going down. The question is, how are they going down? That's the question. How are these numbers going down? And so to find out how these numbers are going down, we have to move my mouse. We have to figure out are they going down by subtracting or are they going down by division. And what I see, notice is these seem to be divided. So if I take these two numbers and I divide by 2 and then I take 96 and I also divide by 2, I seem to have discovered a pattern. And so this pattern right here that you see, this divided by 2 and divided by 2, this is my pattern, and I have just used inductive reasoning to find that pattern. I'm going to use the pattern to come up with the next three terms. And so if I continue to divide by 2, I get 24, and again, I divide by 2, and I get 12, and again, I divide by 2 and I get 6. This is my conjecture as to what the next three answers are going to be. All right, I want to talk about what this conjecture means. This answer is my answer based on my pattern. However, there's sometimes more than one way to see the same problem. What I want you guys to do right now is I want you to write down these three numbers, this 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and I want you right now to see if you can come up with a pattern to get the next three numbers. Have you found it? Have you found the next three numbers? Well, if you haven't, put it on pause and think. Because I'm about to give you two answers that are both right. Pattern number one. is add 0 0.2 to the previous term. If I use that pattern, you say plus 0 0.2 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 plus 0
loss 0 0.2. Then if you do that, if you add 0 0.2, you will get, excuse me, you will get 1.1. And if you add 0 0.2 again, you get 1.3. If you add 0 0.2 again, you get 1.5. So my conjecture is that these three terms are the answer. However, there's a second pattern that most people don't see, but it's still correct. The pattern is there's a zero to start. then a decimal point, followed by the next odd number. There's a zero to start, then a decimal point, followed by the next odd number. Let's see the pattern. Zero to start, Here's my first terms given to me. Next three terms. Well, I start with a zero followed by a decimal point. And then I fill in with the next odd number. Next odd number is 11. Next odd number is 13. Next odd number is 15. This is my conjecture. And it is correct based on this pattern that I saw and using inductive reasoning. So with inductive reasoning, there can be more than one answer. Okay. Go ahead and write down these examples, and I have one more example for you. Okay, last example is using picture patterns. And you're going to always be asked to draw the next term. And so the first thing I notice is I have to draw a cube. So I'm going to follow this pattern. And draw my cube. Now do the best you can. I notice at the top of the cube, the top, there's a circle. I notice around the circle, it's shaded. Now something's happening inside the circle. With my first term, there's no lines. With my second cube, there's one line. With my third cube, there's three lines. Hmm, there seems to be no pattern. Or you can look at it as to there's one space, one line divided into two spaces, three lines divided into three spaces, I do see a pattern. One space, two space, three spaces. So what I need is four spaces. How could I make four spaces? I'm going to do this. The sec second thing I notice is on the left side, left face of this cube, I have this square that is moving. Where is it moving to? It seems to be moving in a circular pattern. So if I continue that pattern, my next square is going to be right here. And I'm done with that side. The last thing I need to take care of are the numbers. I have the number 1, the number 4, and the number 9. This to me is 1 squared. 2 squared and 3 squared. So what's going to go in here is 4 squared or 16. And I'm done with my picture pattern.